What's up, everybody? This is Cody, aka DFS Prodigy, coming to you live with Mr. Mallard from Chasing Green DFS. So we're here to break down the Arnold Palmer PJ DFS breakdown. How's it going, man? Hey, things are going good. I'm looking forward to seeing the, the players really attack this challenging boss this week. This should be a fun one. Right. So basically, like usual, we're going to go tier by tier with 11K, kind of 10K range, go down to the nines, go down to the eights, seven, sixes. And then we have a special surprise at the end from Mr. Mallard, basically talking about his upcoming article, which we'll definitely hit on. So let's start with Roy, Bryson, and Hovland. How do you feel about them three, you guys? Yeah, so for me, bottom line is I like all I like all four of these guys. I'm going to throw Patrick Reed in the mix here. I like all four of these guys at the top. Um, I'm willing to pay for all of them. Um, what's getting me more on the Bryson and the Reed train is pure ownership. Um, looking at about 5% lower ownership than the other two guys. So, you know, I'm going to be playing it around 20 lines. I'm going to definitely have a bits of Hovland and bits of McElroy because, you know, Victor's game has just been two on point recently. Um, the ball strike is going to should carry him in the, off the tee game. He, sh he should set him up well. Um, but, you know, this is DFS and mass, mass multi-entry. you got to find those edges. So I'll be a little more overexposed to Bryson and Reed, but all four of them should crush. Yeah, for sure. So I'm kind of staking the stand, and I'm definitely liking Bryson. The ball striking, the recent form, everything's clicking for him. This is He's going to basically bomb his way to the leaderboard, in my opinion. So I don't mind taking a shot on Bryson. Hovland, so we, we talked about this before the video uh, recorded. So Hovland, the recent form's there. The ball striking is there, but is it like last year's? That's the main question. So that's where you got to basically figure out is would you rather go to Hovland or would you rather go to, to Bryson for 400 or more? I think we both agreed. If let's go to Bryson at 11K. Patrick Reed, you love Patrick Reed. But the, the bold stance I'm taking on more so on my end is I'm fading Rory. The recent form is – it's scary to me, and I don't think he can click at this course. But I know you like Roy a little bit, so that's going to be the main question mark on this basically 10K range is Roy. But I think we both are on a standstill with Bryson being the main guy that we want and Patrick Reed. Talk to me about Tyrell Hatton. I know we had a agreement here and there about him beforehand. Yeah, Hatton's someone I'm personally going to – I won't say I'll fully fade him because when building 20 lines, you just never know, but – Hatton's someone I'm going to try to avoid. Just he's, I see him getting pushed by a lot of other writers, and I just don't think his form and his play is going to to really carry that value to, to be that high owned. So I think I think for me, just for looking for that edge, like I always do, um, that's an easy way to get away from the rest of the field. For sure. And another way to get away from the field is going down to this 9K range. Is I'm baiting Fitzpatrick at 9.8. That price tag is too high for me. I don't agree yeah. with it. Uh, I'm I'm full on fading him at 9-8. I'd much rather go up to Patrick Reed for 400 more or something along the lines of that, just fading. I, I'm not on him. I think we both agree that this 9K range is a little bit iffy, in my opinion. There's not a lot in this 9K range I want. So let's just go ahead and break down this 9K range. Talk to me about some JM, Hideki, Spieth, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, so I, I think... I think I, after talking with you, I'm pretty sure I think M will do better than I think you think he will. Um, so I'm definitely going to have some in, but once again, he's going to be high owned um, just for his price. He's an easy person. He's an easy golfer to where I think if someone's looking to fade the the top, the top four guys to try to fit in some more pricier guys below that, um, they might be starting with him in their lineup quite a bit. And I could see that happening. So I'll definitely have some of him. Um, I think he should be a nice safe play. Um, but I know someone we both agree on that I think could smash a, a lower ownership is Paul Casey at that 9,100 oh, yeah. range. Um, I think we, we're both on him. His, his form is good. His, his history here is, is good. And, you know, I'd be curious to hear some more thoughts on, the, on him from you. Well, and he's played well overseas. Like we might not see that basically yeah. it, here. Like most casual players may not think about that, but in the Euro tour, he's been doing it. He's been doing pretty well. He's looked good. I think the recent forms there, I think he's going to be under-owned. In my opinion, I think the, I think everybody's going to flock to a guy like you said, Sanjay Him, go flock to Tyrell Hatton. But you have Paul Casey, who I think belongs in the 10K, 11K range, in my opinion, rather than 9,100. I mean, he's paired next to Tommy Fleetwood, which I'm I'm much rather go to Paul Casey. So give he's me all right. Paul Casey. Jordan, Jordan Spieth is the mystery man of this group, in my opinion. We kind of both, yeah, I mean – he can definitely smash here. He's been trending upward. 
but he's never played here before. We don't know how he's going to be with the ball striking, but he's definitely kind of a buyer beware, like you were saying, kind of just a high risk, high reward type of player, in my opinion, that if you want to go to him at 9,300, I wouldn't blame you. Uh, I think there's good reasoning behind it, but I think there's good reasoning behind not playing him. So I don't mind taking a shot on him. Hideki, I, I'm personally fading him. <laughs> it's, it's hard to get to Hideki based on the recent form. Something's not clicking with him. I don't know what it is. It's just in his mind, something's not right, I don't think. So I'm not really high on Hideki. Um, looking at more of this kind of nine carriage, do you like Jason Day or Fleetwood at all? I'm not really touching either one. I mean, first yeah. of all, what, what has Fleetwood done in the last year and a half, two years to be remotely yeah. close to 9K? Like, I don't – I don't, I don't see why all of a sudden he, he's up there, you know, even looking at his, like, sure, he has a 16th year last year and a, a third in 2019. So, I mean, technically, yeah, sure, I guess he's got some history here, but but the, the recent form has just been so atrocious that I don't see how that how that gets forgotten and the, his past results just automatically jump him up to that range. So, I'm staying away from Fleetwood. Everyone else can play him if they want. Right, so dropping down to this AK range, talk to me about what you think of this AK range at first. So I like the higher the higher range AK range um, for sure. Like starting for me, I'm starting with Molinari, Zalatoris, and Homa. Um, all guys, I think, well, at least Zalatoris and Homa, they're just in good form. Um, Will hasn't seen this course before, so that's definitely a risk to think of. But it's one of those cases where he's just playing so well, he's not missing cuts. Um, and he's finishing at that, you know, top 20s more often than not. So he, he just seems to be feeling it. And you know, it could be a case where he sees this course for the first time and, and he just gets it. So I'm definitely willing to take some chances on him. Um, Homa, just good, great form recently. Um, same thing. He doesn't really have much experience here the last two years. Um, nothing jumps off the page as far as his, his finishes. I'm sorry, just the last year. He didn't play in 2019. So he had a 24th there last year. Um, but he's someone I'm going to get to as well. And Molinari just got the pedigree. He's got the the history here. The form's been a little iffy, but uh, this is a course he's been able to to show up at even when he hasn't for at other times of the year. Exactly. So I, I like Will Zalatoris at eight six. This is his debut. I think he can do well in his debut. I think it's, he's going to be kind of nervous, given that this is his debut at this course. But recent forms there, the the game is clicking. I don't mind taking a shot at him. Molinari, same thing. Uh, is this his debut for this course also or no? Molinari? Yeah. No, he's played – so he didn't play here last year, but he played the four years previous to that. And he no, it's three. Homa. Homa, this is his Homa's debut, right? Oh, Homa. No, he played here last year. He got he played it last, last year? I thought it was his yeah. debut also. My bad. Um, no, anyways. Yeah, second, second time. I, yeah. So, I like Max Homa. I think, like I said, also recent form, one last week. I think he's a good pivot if you want to get to him. Two from Sam Burns. I think that's a great pivot because Sam Burns, like you said, is going to be highly owned. Yes, he's been on fire given it is Burns. Obviously, he's been on fire. Um, so he's been good. Game's been clicking. If you want to pivot to Max Homer Zalatoris, I wouldn't blame you. I definitely like that. If you like we talked about before, if you want to start your lineup with this 8K range, go balanced, kind of fade the 9Ks, fade the 10Ks, and go balanced, get you a couple or a few guys in this range, I would not blame you one bit. This is a good strategy, in my opinion, for GPPs. Do you like Harris English at all, or are you kind of fading him, even though he's been off? I'm not really touching yeah. – yeah, I'm not really touching Harris English. Um, I want to make just say one more thing on Homa, the fact that you can get him at 10%, and, oh, yeah. and he's been just on fire. I mean, in his last four tournaments, he's ranked first in strokes <laughs> game total, um, including a win at the Genesis. So, I mean – he's he's crushing it and for only 10 percent compared to some of the other guys in his range it, that's just an easy play for me yeah, mental I'm, I'm, game. the mental yeah, game like you were talking hey, about. you called it you called it what like three four weeks ago mental game yeah no you nailed that one he, he changed the whole entire demeanor that's that's what go, i mean for a golfer that changes the it's fun changing yeah, your mental did. lineup changing your mental what you think about how you go back into the course everything man like i said the yeah, mental he, game is there he definitely found that headspace and just a little teaser if you if you like the mental game of golf. Definitely stick around to the end of the video because right. I got something for you. Um, but, yeah, so I'm staying away from English. I'm mostly staying away from Burns just because of the ownership, even though yeah. I, he's just – he is a good form. But I'm going to probably go to some other some other edge uh, edge plays there, uh, such as Alishman and Kokrak. 
Um, <laughs> not looking for them to win the tournament, but I wouldn't be surprised if at least one of them finished top 20, top 30 here. Um, I think they're safe plays, and at that price compared to some other guys around them, uh, you know, I like them. So looking at now this 7K range, I definitely like me some Cam Davis. I think he turns out well here, the ball striking, the approach play. I think that's going to be well here at this course. Justin Rose, I know you talked about. I know you like him. Tringali, I think yeah. this course sets up very well for Tringali. I think this is I think this is a bomber's game for him. He's been looking good. He's been way better than we expected him to be for Tringali. I definitely like him at 7-7. What do you like in this upper 7K kind of range? Yeah, we're on the same guys there. Davis, Rose, Tringali. I mean, Tringali's definitely been – I honestly – I wouldn't have minded Tringali even if he was a couple hundred more in the eight or eight one range because I, yeah. I think he deserves it. I think he can yeah. he can carry that that value. Um, Rose to me, but to be under eight K for Rose, um, I, I know he doesn't have quite the pop that he's had in past years, but you know, this is a guy who's played this course, played this course well. He's a savvy veteran, and you know he's a safe player. So when it comes to getting off the tee at this course, which is very important, one of the key stats you need to look at. Um, I think Justin Rose is a safe play for his price and for the value that he can return on that. So I think also Lonto Griffin, he's kind of just a lower owned Tringali. In my opinion, I think they're the same player almost. I think that he sets up well for this course. So there's a lot in this upper 7K range I do like. I know we skipped over. I think there's not – I'm not getting to Hadwin Jones Grill. Are you getting to any of these guys? I'm not really getting to much of them at all. Whatsoever. Yeah, I'm mostly skipping that middle 7K range. Um, just no one really popped to me. It's, there's just value both above and below that just makes more sense than than that, you know, that 76 to $7,300 range. I'm not getting it to someone again until Luke List and Henrik Norlander. I wouldn't mind either one of them. Exactly. But I know the guy I did want to point out was Corey Connors. I think he can do well here. I know you kind of have a different opinion about him, but I think he can set up well here. I think he can bounce back here for sure, in my opinion, if you want to get to him at 7-3. I don't. I like his price tag, too. I think that's a steal. I think he can be priced a little bit upwards, honestly. I think the price, like I said, the price tag is there for him. But I know the price know tag the guy, is definitely nice. Yeah. I know the guy that we did both like a ton was Matthew Neesmith at 6'9". I think his price should be way up higher than the 7K range. His recent yeah. form has been amazing. I mean, for Neesmith, out of all people, I, I like it a ton, in my opinion. I think he's, I, just, I think he's a great yeah. value. Let what about you? Just, I'm going to read off a couple stats here right now because I, I need you to just let this sink in that he's only 6,900 this week. Yeah, go ahead. For the last 24 <laughs> rounds on tour, he's first in strokes gained approach. Second in strokes game ball striking, second in greens and regulation, and seventh in approach from 150 to 170 under 7K. The main distances. And he's under 7K. So yeah. if you factor that in, you can look past his miscut here last year, which was his first time playing the course. I'm, I'm willing to give him a pass on that because it's a tough course. Agreed. Then you look at his recent form of four, you know, three top 20s in his last four tournaments. I mean, I, I can't. I can't get away from that from at that price. It's, it's just too good. Right. So what else do you like kind of – do you like anybody else in this lower 7K range? I know we kind of skipped over it a little bit, but there's not much I want really in this uh, lower 7K. Yeah, no, I actually do like a couple more guys in this range. Right. Um, yeah. Someone who might be surprising because you got to just pick the right tournament with this guy is Keegan Bradley. It feels like a Keegan Bradley week. And I said that a couple weeks ago, and I didn't listen to myself, and it ended up being a, a decent week for him. Um, his form is has been actually pretty good, surprisingly, recently. Um, he ranks out top 15 in five of my stats for this week. Uh, he's you know he's not blowing up the leaderboard. He's he's making cuts and and finishing middle of the middle of the pack. But at, at seven thousand, the uh, with the upside that he could turn out. If he if he gets off the tee where uh, I'm willing to take a shot with him in some of my lines for sure. So looking at this now lower 6K range, I'm going right back to the well in. Uh, I don't mind Munoz, but the guy I do like is Keegan Stanley. I definitely do like him. Talk to me about Stanley or Kyle yeah. Stanley. My bad, Kyle Keegan Bradley. Stanley, yeah, it threw yeah, me off. That's, that's all right. <laughs> Yeah, another guy that 6,500 for Kyle Stanley. I mean, the it just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, sure, he doesn't have a win. He's, he's not – same thing. He's not blowing up the leaderboard or anything. But when it comes to fantasy production, when it comes to 
to all the stats, I mean, they're there. The numbers are there. He, he should, I think he should at least be, you know, a 7,400 range kind of player. Um, I think that's the value he could return. And a 6,500, that's, that's just an easy play for me. And, and the lineups that I want to get, you know, pair of Reed and a DeChambeau together. Like, Stan will be in those lineups for me for sure. Exactly. Um, I don't, like I said, Munoz, I don't mind him. I know the recent form has been iffy. I know he's been just kind of not really the greatest player, but I think this is about to have course for him. I think he can definitely do about six, seven. I think he can pay off that price tag as a value. Um, are you looking at anyone else in this K range? I kind of hit just a couple of guys that I mainly like. What about you? Yeah, the only one I might drop down to from Munoz that I would consider is, is Lucas Glover. Um, yeah. Not, not a flashy play by any means, but when you look at uh, his history at Bay Hill, as far as the stats go, he's he's top 15 and everything. Um, he technically had a mi- missed cut here last year, but uh, before that, he was consistently making the cut. He was finished top 10 a couple of years in there. So this is someone who, who knows this course well and um, has a good history here. Uh, I know his recent form, is, it's a bit up and down, but I think he's safe to make the cut in this case. And if he makes it to the weekend, I think he's someone that because of his knowledge of the course could turn it on to, to maybe get you a top 25 here. Right. Um, so yeah, that pretty much wraps up that six K range room. I'm not getting any lower, obviously I'm not hitting yeah. the snackers. No, I mean, so Sabatini, not really. I mean, do you like anybody else lower than Stanley? Cause I'm not really getting to much. No, I don't. And more importantly, I don't think you need to go lower than Stanley. Just considering the value that we like in that in that lower 7K and in that 8K range, I think you can build yeah. your, your lineups mainly centered around that 8K range and not have to worry about getting too far into the 6K. And, right. I, and I think you could have some success with that. Yeah. So talk to me about the article that you wanted to point out to everybody. Yeah, so I just I put out an article today on, on the chasing uh, chasing green dfs.com website. Um, just kind of came out of nowhere, it just flowed out, just just some uh, viewpoint of Tiger and his current his current injury status and, and that whole situation and just kind of the mental side of the game of golf and and looking at how how these pro athletes are, you know, there, there's something special to deal with what they have to deal with on on a, on a weekly basis and and kind of where we stand in parallel with that. So if you, if you like the game of golf, if you like the different facets and the different ways to look at it, definitely want you to consider checking out uh, chasinggreendfs.com and uh, click on the article. The article is titled uh, Master's Mind. So please check that out if, if you're interested and, uh, and enjoy. I'm actually pulling it up right now on the website. There it is right at the top of Google. I love to see it. Hell Yeah. <laughs> Nice to see my SEO is working. <laughs> so pulling it up for Chasing Green DFS, you'll see basically once my computer loads, obviously with the Wi-Fi, you'll see basically showdown articles that I write about every single night. You'll see basically the master's minds. Like you said, basically the article you broke out, UFC. Like I said, we have basically everything. If y'all want to check that out. NBA, UFC, everything you want to talk about, definitely check out Chasing Green DFS. And there's a Discord where I know me and you hang out literally all day when we're not working. So we're talking to everybody. So definitely okay, check that out. Instead of working. Yeah. Well, yeah, I wish. So, um, <laughs> for me, for me. so yeah, exactly. So that pretty much wraps up this breakdown video for us for the PGA Arnold Palmer. Definitely check out the video replay. You'll see all our values. Go to Chasing Green DFS website. You'll see basically the article there. And I know your cheat sheet should be up what, tonight or tomorrow. Uh, it'll be up tomorrow afternoon. I'll have the cheat sheet. I'll have my whole player pool, my core, everything you need to, to break down this tournament. Right. So we should be good for this tournament. I'm definitely excited about it. Do you have any last closing thoughts before we head out of here, man? No, I'm good. Just, just good luck, everyone, and uh, see you next week. Exactly. So – Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Have a great and safe rest of your night. Thank you, everybody.